Now this is Matthew Robert Payne. This is called Experiencing God's Peace. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you come from uh, a background of drugs. Um, I didn't have much of a background of drugs, but I did experience with marijuana. And uh, smoking marijuana um, brings on a certain comfort, a certain peace, uh, a certain mellow feeling. Um, the best that I can describe God's peace is like a heavy stone of marijuana. Things are just cool, baby. Things are just peaceful. It's just so sweet. I, I, Satan always counterfeits the real things of God. The joy of the Lord and, and the anointing of the Lord, a heavy anointing of the Lord, is just like ecstasy tablets. Um, so, uh, experiencing the peace of God. I've, I've been under such peace of God has dropped on my life that I couldn't stand up. I, I just couldn't stand on my, on, on my feet. I was so overwhelmed with this peaceful feeling. How do you experience God's peace? What is the key to experiencing the peace and presence of God? What's the key? Would you like to experience the presence of God? First of all, the, the, the main ingredient for experiencing the peace of God is to be a Christian. A second helpful uh, part of uh, experiencing the peace of God would be, be baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is giving a greater measure of the Holy Spirit. But even people who aren't baptized in the Holy Spirit can experience a, a level of God's peace. But the main overriding, the main essential key feature of experiencing the presence of God and the continual abiding peace of God in your life is to abide in Christ. And what is abiding Christ? Abiding Christ is obeying Jesus Christ and all his commands in the Bible. Jesus had many directions for the Christian. Jesus had many directions and ways that a disciple of his should act and behave. And if you behave and act in those ways, if you don't sin against God and you don't sin against men, if you act in love towards God and to all your fellow men, and you make a practice of acting in love toward all your fellow men and God, if you live in a life of holiness without much sin in your life, if you walk in the Spirit, like you get directions of the Holy Spirit on what to do on a certain day and a certain time, and if you do those things, and walk in the Spirit and obey the Holy Spirit. If you obey the commandments of Jesus in the Bible, set down in the Bible and, and other places in the, uh, set down in the Gospels in the Bible and other places in the Bible, if you obey what's set down in the Bible and you obey the directions that the Holy Spirit gives you your personal life to do, take that job, do that thing, speak to that person, write that person a letter, go and tell the pastor that it was a good sermon, all those impressions and things that the Holy Spirit tells you to do, if you obey what the Bible says, plus obey everything the Holy Spirit tells you to do, you will experience the presence of God and the peace of God. The more that you obey, the greater the presence of God, the more weighty the presence and the peace of God will be in your life. I was listening to a YouTube video of, of, of a guy on YouTube that only looks at about 16 and he said that if he obeys God 98% of the time he has no peace. If he's only obeying God 98% he has no peace. It's only when he obeys God 100% that he walks with the peace and the presence and the joy of the Lord in his life. He, he said that the peace of God is directly related to obedience and he knows when he's not completely 100% following what the Holy Spirit has told him to do. And he knows in those times that he doesn't experience the peace of God. So is, is God just a bit of a miser? Is God uh, 
a bit of a, a, a person who is like a briber saying, if you don't do what I say, I'm not going to give you peaceful feelings. No, it's more like this. The more that you love God, the more that you are obeying God and showing that you love God, the more that your life is 100% committed to doing what God wants you to do in your life, the more closer God draws to you. It says in James, draw close to God and he'll draw close to you. And how would you draw close to God? It's speaking to God and walking hand in hand with what God wants you to do in your life. When, when you're in a significant relationship with a person, you don't go around doing the opposite of what they love. If there's things that really hurt that person, if you, if you say you love that person and you're committed to the relationship, you don't do those things. You stop that behaviour. So too, if you're in relationship with God, you obey God and do the things that make God pleased. You make God happy. And when you're loving God through a practical, through a practical living uh, lifestyle of obeying God, then His peace will rest on you. It's like... I want to do everything. There's nothing I don't want to do for you, God. I'll do anything for you. And he says, really? And he starts to tell you things that he wants you to do that are hard. And you do them and you jump over those hoops. And you go through the hoops and you jump over the barriers. And it gets harder and harder and he tells you to do harder and harder things. And you keep on proving to him that you love at him. He brings suffering into your life. He allows suffering and destruction and all sorts of trials and persecutions in your life. And you go to church and you're crying and you're praising him and saying, I love you regardless of what, how bad my life is. I'll always love you. I'll always obey you. It doesn't matter how bad things get. I'll always love you. And it just melts his heart. You know, someone who's done really wrong by you, when you forgive that person and you don't hold any animosity against that person, the person loves you even more. Well, the same is true when life and circumstances really afflict us and persecute us on earth. Uh, God is in a position where if you hold it against him, your relationship is going to suffer. But when he sees that you don't hold it against him and you're broken and you're crying and you push beyond measure and you hold your hands in the air and you just weep and praise him and say, thank you for loving me. I love you. I'll love you to the end, no matter how painful it is. It just blesses God's heart and he rains down his peace and his joy on you. I hope that you understand that it, it is true that you can experience the peace of God. You can walk through each day as though you're stoned. You can walk through each day on a spiritual high. You can be going through tremendous suffering and tremendous hard times, tremendous trials. You can be getting all sorts of affliction and attack from other people and very, and very much be at peace and walking with a strong dose of peace. Just like uh, being on painkillers, on heavy medication and he heavy anaesthetic, uh, being doped up on morphine, you're sort of not really there. You're so full of the drug that uh, you, you're just uh, sleepy and tired. Well, you can be so full of peace that you just, you just it's like you're doped up on something. And uh, I want you to experience God's peace and uh, you, you, you need to spend time with God you need to start to obey God and you get to know him and do everything that he tells you to do